What is going on YouTube? Gavin's here and today I will show you the latest product from the awesome guys over at Star Labs, the latest laptop, the Star Laptop Mark III. Full disclosure here, they actually sent me a free review unit, but this will in no way influence my review or the thoughts I have on this laptop. So with no further ado guys, let's check it out. Before we start, I want to make a little premise. While working on this review, I found some issues or some missing features. I asked Star Labs about them and they started working on it and promptly sent me a couple of testing BIOSes fixing those issues. The new BIOSes are not yet official, but once they release them, you will benefit from all of the stuff they added in. So let's kick off the review with some tech specs. So the Star Laptop Mark III comes with an Intel Core i7-8550U with 4 cores and 8 threads and a clock of 1.8 GHz, turboing up to 4 GHz. The GPU is the Intel UHD Graphics 620. As for RAM, it has two banks of 4 GB Samsung LPDDR4 at 2400 MHz for a total of 8 GB. For storage, it has a 480GB NVMe SSD. It's a Fison E12AA using BICS3. I didn't know this brand personally, but apparently it's one of the faster SSDs out there, made to compete with the newer Samsung ones. Included in the box, you will find the laptop itself, of course, with the included charger. And the nice thing about the charger is that it comes with all the international adapters you may need, so regardless of where you live, you will be covered. Inside the laptop, between the screen and the keyboard, there's also this very nice microfiber cloth that actually protects the screen from keyboard marks when the lid is closed. A very nice thing is that Star Labs actually included in the box for me uh, a 16GB branded USB stick with the Arch image already flashed on it, ready for me to install it. Well, I guess everyone knows how I roll at this point. I want to spend a little time uh, just appreciating the design of this laptop. I just have no words really. This is a whole new thing. It's just gorgeous to look at. It's uh, all matte black and it's all aluminum all around. I have no, no many words to say about it really because you just need to have a look at it. It's the materials, the whole design language. It's very modern yet. Uh, these dark colors make it look different. It's very nice. As for build quality, there isn't much to say here. It's uh, pretty good all around. Uh, the body is all aluminum and the screen doesn't flex at all, uh, probably thanks to the glass panel in front of the display. And there is some amount of flex on the uh, bare aluminum parts, like uh, on the top of the screen and on the uh, polymerized area or the keyboard, but it's very subtle and it doesn't really uh, interfere with the use of the laptop. It's not very noticeable unless you really push hard on the uh, aluminum parts themselves. So let's talk about the input. The keyboard has a good layout, compact without sacrificing any functionality. And the only thing I would have done differently is separating the up and down arrow keys by shrinking the right shift. But to be honest, I can't really complain because many people use the right shift a lot and shrinking it would make it a lot more difficult to use for them. The key feel is pretty nice. I'd say it's above average. The keys are tactile and they have a very nice travel. I immediately felt familiar with the keyboard and that's probably because it's a very standard layout. The keyboard is also backlit, but you can't customize the brightness. It's either on or off and doesn't offer any software control as far as I can tell. The backlight turns off automatically when you're not typing for 30 seconds and that's a nice feature that allows to save some battery life. At the same time, I can see how it could be annoying for some people. So in the testing BIOS they sent me, they included an option to customize the time the keyboard stays lit as well as an option to disable the automatic turning off completely. The F keys double as media keys as well, and there is a dedicated lock button to switch between defaults. The only problem is that the preference is lost upon reboot, and there is no indication of what mode is currently enabled. With the testing BIOS, they fixed this issue, and now the preference you set with lock key survives across reboots. 
The power button is also part of the keyboard layout and it's located at the top right corner of the keyboard. And while it does look nicer than having a spare button out of the layout and maybe uh, allows to save some more space, I often accidentally press it when I'm trying to reach out for the delete key. It's not really a huge annoyance since I've disabled it in the operating system settings, but it's something I still wanted to mention. Again, in the testing BIOS, they've mostly fixed this issue. And now to activate the power button, you have to hold it for about a second or so. And that's more than enough to prevent accidental presses. The trackpad is a very nice one. It's quite big and its surface is a very smooth and pleasant glass. Tracking feels natural and precise and multi-finger gestures work better than many other laptops I've seen. It's a clickpad, so it has no dedicated buttons and it's clickable practically across the whole surface. Personally, I think that the trackpad and the keyboard are the two most important parts of a laptop and the Star Laptop Mark III has great ones. As for ports, there are two USB 3 type A ports on each side and there is a dedicated HDMI port and a micro SD card slot as well as a headphone jack. There is also a single USB Type-C port that doubles as a charging port. Unfortunately, the Type-C does not support Thunderbolt 3. And while that's unfortunate since the Thunderbolt 3 is the future and provides a great possibility for expandability, I understand that it's a reasonable compromise to keep the price lower. The battery is 45.6 watt hour and the battery life is just great. I'm able to comfortably get to uh, 6 to 7 hours of medium to light use when the screen brightness is about 50% and the keyboard backlight is mostly turned off. And this is even without doing any particular power management tweaks like uh, TLP or anything like that. As for charging, it's reasonably fast. It takes about 2 hours and 20 minutes to get from 10% to 100%. But really, with such a long battery life, I rarely found myself worrying about it too much. In a typical day, I use the computer on and off all day and just charge it overnight. Also, I want to make a quick note on how awesome having a Type-C charger is. First, I can use the same charger for my phone, and second, if I ever need more battery life, there are plenty of Type-C power banks out there these days that are able to charge laptops. As for the screen, now the screen is really, really good quality. It's a 1080p screen and that's plenty for a 13 inch laptop. The colors look right and the panel does get pretty bright as well. The screen bezel is very small, not as small as in other laptops, but it's a very nice touch and in my opinion it's enough to make a difference in the overall size of the device. They decided to put a glass panel in front of the display, even if it's not a touch screen. And I can see how some people may not like that because of the annoying reflection it can cause, but personally I think that it makes the laptop feel overall more premium and it also protects the actual screen panel from scratches and makes eventual keyboard marks easier and less risky to clean. Not to mention that it also adds structural rigidity to the whole screen so it virtually doesn't flex. This said, my particular unit suffers from some severe backlight bleed and I immediately told Star Labs about it and they said that they were willing to replace it no problem. They said that it's their standard policy for every customer to replace any laptop with any manufacturing defect, including any problems with the screen like backlight bleed in my case or even dead pixels. I wanted to put particular attention on this point since in my experience many well-known brands wouldn't do the same in a situation like this. And that's one thing that really shows the amount of care and passion that Star Labs puts in their products. Now, portability is probably the best thing about this laptop. With a very compact 13 inches form factor and a weight of just under 1.3 kilograms, it's a breeze to pack it and carry it around. And even if you want to pack the charger just to make sure you don't run out of battery, it's just another 270 grams. If you're the kind of person that tries to work at coffee shops or your student that needs to go back and forth to school every day, or if you just happen to travel a lot, then you're very likely going to benefit from the ultrabook nature of this laptop. One thing I didn't expect was the little customization Star Labs included in their default Ubuntu install. They have their own custom theme based on the Yaru theme by Ubuntu, and that is basically the same but with blue accents instead of orange. And they also included a sweet cursor theme, again following their brand design language along with a selection of wallpapers to go along with the rest of the setup. To be honest, these themes are not really a huge deal, they're just small things, but they're a nice addition to an otherwise vanilla Ubuntu experience, and in my opinion, it makes a little bit of difference. 
Another nice feature they included in the BIOS is the ability to turn off the Intel management engine. They understand that many people don't like it being always active on your computer and so they just included this very nice option to disable it from the BIOS and if you're really concerned about it you can just turn it off and forget about it. Just mind that when you need to do any BIOS updates you need to have the management engine turned on otherwise you will just break your laptop so when you need to do BIOS updates remember to turn on the management engine and when you're done you can just turn it back off. Speaking of BIOS updates, uh, as of now they are done using the standard procedure so you uh, put the files in a USB drive and boot from the command line UEFI mode and install it from there. But as of recording this, they're actually in contact with the people from the Linux vendor firmware service, also known as uh, LVFS, to be able to integrate their laptops with the universal firmware update uh, tool that's basically built into most distributions nowadays. So in the very near future, you'll be able to update your BIOS and firmware directly from your favorite Linux distribution using the um, FW update tool from the command line or any enabled uh, graphical user interface like GNOME software. The webcam is another weak point of this device. It has a 720p resolution and according to OBS it gets uh, up to 15 FPS, which is pretty low if you ask me. The microphone is more decent, but nothing too great. It's usable and serviceable, but not much more than that. The speakers are another weak point of this laptop. They are small and the volume is low, and Starlabs told me that they are artificially limiting the maximum volume that they can output to about 70% to find a reasonable balance between volume and quality. They also added that they're probably going to change the cap to about 92% and I agree with that decision. Personally, I think that it's better to have bad quality sound rather than unusably low volume. For now, I'm working around this issue by using overamplification and fortunately, GNOME added an option to easily enable it in their latest release. This said, you can use headphones or a Bluetooth speaker to easily work around this issue so it's not really the end of the world. Opening up laptop is fairly easy, you have to remove 12 screws on the bottom and that's it. The whole panel comes off to reveal basically all of the hardware. And a quick note here, I initially thought that the speakers were glued to the panel itself because when I opened the panel they just stuck to it. Turns out it was just friction with the dust filters, so if you happen to open up the laptop and the speakers don't come off, just gently separate them from the panel and place them on their respective plastic bags ready for reassembly. Anyway, while opening up the laptop itself, as I said, is fairly easy, upgradeability is limited. The only thing you can replace is the M.2 SSD while the RAM is soldered on the motherboard. Looking at the internal layout, I understand how this is a cost saving measure. I don't think there would have been enough space for full fledged sodium slots. As for maintenance, if you need to clean the fan someday or replace the thermal paste, I don't think it would be too much effort. Looking at the internal layout, I can understand where the awesome battery life comes from. The laptop is practically all battery itself, and it's really good to see that they made the best out of the limited space they were working with. Now, one of the biggest advantages of this laptop, in my opinion, is really how much you're getting for your money. This exact model costs £997 in the UK, uh, 1137 euros in well Europe and 1097 dollars excluding taxes I guess in the US 
If you compare that to the closest competitors, that's actually a bit cheaper for what you're getting. Since I've got this laptop, the most frequent thing I've been doing with it has been programming. Of course, it's not a particularly resource intensive task by itself, but in my typical workflow, that's what I have open. Three to four terminal windows with various sessions of Vim and SSH. Up to four browser windows open with multiple tabs open in each. Telegram always in the background, sometimes receiving notifications. Remina open on a VNC session to another local machine. An Electron app I've been working on, written in TypeScript and Angular and constantly getting started and stopped. All of this under a GNOME Wayland session using touchpad gestures and the activities overview feature constantly. And I haven't seen a single hiccup. The hardware was perfectly capable of handling this kind of workload and while staying silent most of the time. During compilation maybe the fan ramped up for a couple of seconds but again without showing any particular sign of slowing down. As for media consumption, I, if I wanted to watch a movie on this laptop, while the screen is definitely great and well up to the task, the speakers, as I already mentioned, they are subpar and the quality they provide would severely harm the watching experience. Depending on the setup you have in place, you can again fix this issue by hooking up speakers or headphones to it. For something less demanding though, I think it's workable. I found myself listening to some background music while doing some other work and I even managed to follow a couple of video tutorials without much effort. This said, I was doing all of this indoors in a virtually quiet environment. I wanted to try gaming on this laptop, not because it's a gaming laptop per se, in fact it's an ultrabook, it's the opposite of a gaming laptop, but just to see how far I can push the hardware. So here are some results of some games I tested. A little premise, all of these tests, except for Doom, were run under Wayland. I don't think you'd see much different results if I was running Sorg, but I guess it's worth mentioning it. Ballistic Overkill ran pretty decently at uh, 1336 by 768 with low settings, and I was able to get around 70 FPS in game. CSGO ran quite a bit better, I was able to reach 1080p at low again, getting around 40 to 50 FPS. Rocket League was pretty disappointing. I thought I could have reached 60 FPS, but even at 1280 by 720, lowest settings I could get, I was still between 40 to 50 FPS. Doom was a little weird. Given it's the only title I tested that requires Proton to run, uh, it's still on the whitelist, so I thought it would have been an effortless experience. The game runs on OpenGL by default, so the first startup needs to go through that, and it just didn't launch, it straight crashed. I found a command to force the Vulkan renderer, and with that I was still getting a black screen. Finally I switched to an XORG session and the game finally launched. To get to a playable frame rate, I had to set it to 1280x720 with 50% resolution scaling and lower settings. With that I was able to get a decent frame rate of 30 to 50 FPS. So guys, as you see, this is a very interesting product. It's sleek and portable, yet it packs enough punch to allow you to work on your daily tasks without worrying about performance. If you're in the market for an Ultrabook, I really suggest you consider the Star Laptop Mark III because I really enjoyed my time with it and I think you might as well. So guys, it's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button down there and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Also make sure to check out the TechPills website at techpills.technology as well as the awesome TechPills community at techpills.technology slash community. You'll find all the links in the description as always. So again guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.